No. No. That didn't just happen again. That didn't just happen for the fourth time. What, what, in like two weeks, two weeks, three weeks that this has happened? You know? You know? <laughs> it happened again. It happened again. <laughs> They wasted another home run. They wasted another clutch home run in the ninth. The time the ball came up, they wasted it. They so wasted it. Oh my god. Oh my god. They wasted it again because the two Thunderheads in this lineup, JT Romuto and Nick Castellanos, zero outs and two runners on base. What do they do against Rysel Iglesias, who clearly did not have the right stuff in that ninth inning? After the Trey Turner home run. Trey Turner, a beautiful at bat. Alec Bone, beautiful at bat that leads to a single. Bryce Harper, beautiful at bat that leads to a single. And he got pissed. And he got pissed that it was a single. Because he wanted more. Because honestly, he probably knew. He probably knew that that was their only chance. Because you know why? JT Romuto, Nick Castellanos are the least clutch people I've ever seen in the goddamn lineup. Holy shit. Four pitches. You see four pitches after this one guy on the mound, Iglesias, cannot throw a single strike. You swing at four straight pitches. JT Romuto had two meatballs. Had two meatballs right down the middle of the plate, and he missed it. And then he swings at a pitch yay outside. And then Nick Castellanos, the first pitch that he sees, because, oh, he loves swinging at the first pitch. He loves swinging at the first pitch. Grounds into a double play at the end of the inning. And get this, the, dude, the double play it took forever for them to set it up. And Nick Castellanos is still out by 50 feet. Run up the line, dude. Run at least if you're going to, you know, fuck up on the first pitch again. At least run up the line. But no, we can't have nice things. And then Craig Kimbrell, who was having a very nice, you know, top of the 10th inning until the umpire screwed him, screwed him right up the ass on a pitch that was right in the box. The umpire today was trash, trash. You remember that first inning at bat to Austin Riley? How many pitches were inside the zone? Zach Wheeler had to have thrown eight strikes in that at bat. Not even all of them were foul balls. Majority of them were balls, apparently. A ball that dots it right on the corner. A ball that, you know, just hits the outside part of the plate. No. No. Can't even, can't even call that a strike. And then, of course, and then, of course, Brad Hand is the one to close it out. Brad fucking Hand. The guy last year that was an internal blow-up. A blow-up last year when he came onto the mound. He's the guy that shut you down? He's the guy that shut you down and Stout did his job to get Castellanos over the third. Marsh with a terrible at bat. Oh, I can't take it anymore. I can't. I can't take it anymore. I can't. With this team and the lack of the clutch gene from people in the lineup, specifically JT Romuto and Nick Castellanos, what is that? Four wasted home runs. And what? Four times. Bryce Harper's three-run shot to tie it against the Giants. You lost that game in extras. Bryce Harper's home run in the bottom of the eighth against the Angels. You lost that in the ninth inning. Bryce Harper's home run and came one of the doubleheader yesterday. And you lost it. And then today, Trey Turner. Trey Turner. Oh, no, the Phillies are not falling out of the wild card spot. It's just fucking annoying. It is. Julian, they're not in big trouble. They're not. They're not falling out of the wild card spot. Currently right now, the Cubs are losing to the Rockies again, 4-2, to two, in the bottom of the fifth inning. So, even though that can go any way, you can get help from the Rockies, which, even though it didn't happen last night. And, of course, you get a game today from Zach Wheeler when he just clearly didn't have his best stuff. 
like, is, is it just the fact that Wheeler didn't have his best stuff or the Braves are just too good? Because Matt Olson with, you know, hitting, you know, 50,000 home runs, it, it just seems like that's what he's doing this year. Dude has been fantastic. Um, what Ronald Acuna is going to win MVP. Amazing. Max Fried was nasty today. Even though the Phillies had way more opportunities early on in the ball game, you know, Nick Castellanos home run. They had some base runners throughout the early part of the game. They didn't get hits there. So yeah, it's wasted opportunities in those aspects. No, Julian, the worst possible outcome is to play Milwaukee. The worst possible outcome is to play, play Milwaukee in a, in a wild card series. If they play Milwaukee, they're going to get swept because of their pitching. That's what I believe. You need to win the first wild card spot. That, that is necessary. I'd rather play the Cubs. I'd rather play the Cubs. The Phillies are not going to fall in the wild card spots. They're up way too many games on the other teams besides the Cubs. They're not going to fall into the final wild card spot. They still got games against the Cardinals. I know, I know you're going to bring up the record about the NL East record because they play the Mets as well, but they're playing the Mets, they're playing the Cardinals, and they're also playing the Pirates to end the year. I know they also have another series mixed in with the Braves on the road. It's frustrating shit. You take care of your business this weekend in St. Louis. Well, hell, you still got a game tomorrow against Atlanta. Christopher Sanchez on the mound. Julian, I know they're five and seven this month. I know, I know they're five and seven this month. It's not like they're ter they're playing terrible baseball. It's not like they're playing terrible baseball. This entire series with Atlanta, they can play with Atlanta. It's obvious they can. Yes, I'd rather play a series with Chicago and Arizona. I'd rather. Chicago is very fraudulent. They're pitching besides basically, you know, what is it, steel? It's, that's basically it. I don't trust their bullpen either besides, you know, their closer. And that's basically it. Their pitching for the Cubs is not the best. And their lineup is very, you know, full of youth and all of that stuff. Yeah, they have Dansby Swanson and Cody Bellinger. But besides that, it's a, it's a very young lineup. It's a very young team. That has no postseason experience besides, you know, Swanson, Bellinger, and Ian Hat, maybe. That's basically it. Same thing for the um, Diamondbacks. They're a very young team. That's it. The Diamondbacks are a very young team as well, with no experience. The Brewers, they have plenty of experience on that roster, and their pitching is too good. Hell, I... I've said that if you know the if the Brewers were to end up, play, I feel like the Brewers would be the toughest task for Atlanta with their pitching. Even though the Phillies this series obviously can play up to offensively with the Braves, because we've seen that in every game so far. We saw that in Game One of the doubleheader. We saw that in Game Two of the doubleheader, and we saw that today. They can play up to them offensively. They can. So, it's proven the Phillies can. And they're putting, you know, that, you know, maybe they're putting that stank in the back of their mind that, oh, shit, these Phillies again. Oh, shit, they're going to keep doing this to us. It's, it's the fact that, you know, they're putting it in the back of their minds, but it's pissing me off that they can't get the job done right now. It is. It's really pissing me off that they can't get the job done. Seriously. After Trey Turner's fantastic home run to tie the ball game up, Alec Bohm, fantastic at bat. Bryce, fantastic at bat. You swing at the next four pitches when Iglesias clearly was not feeling confident in himself. Seriously, he went into that inning not feeling confident in himself at all. Yeah, he went up 0-2 on Trey Turner, but Trey Turner works the best at bat possible and gets his pitch and drives it so deep into the seats. Like, seriously... If you're J like someone just tell JT Romuto to bunt the two runners over. Just bunt the two runners over and Nick Castellanos just get the ball into the air. Get the ball into the air. That's all you gotta do. But no, but no. JT trying to get the gigantic swing of his life. It's not gonna happen in one swing, JT. You're not Trey Turner and you're not Bryce Harper. You're not. You're not. 
put the ball in play, get it into position to where your team can succeed. No. No. <laughs> Jesus. Well, Julian Stott did his job in the 10th. He got Castellanos the third base on the ground out. So he did his job there. It's just the fact that Marsh had a terrible at bat, and that's the, the problem there. And then your best chance was was uh, Rojas, and that wasn't going to work. In my, as, as much as I love Rojas, he just wasn't getting the job done in that situation. He's just, you know, it's too much for him at that point. Oh, yeah, Stubbs would have bunted 100%. Stubbs would have bunted 100%. No doubt. Stubbs would have bunted 100%. Yeah, t 10th inning, fucking Brad Hand. I thought to myself, oh, Brad Hand? You got this in the fucking bag. I thought, because no, did anyone see Brad Hand on the Phillies last year? On how prone he was to the big hit with inherited runners? <laughs> All he needed to do was put the ball in play. All you needed to do was put the ball. All Marsh had to do was get the ball in the air deep enough. And he couldn't do that. And he couldn't do that. So tired of that. Seriously, it's it's the biggest punch in the balls in the world. No, not even a punch. Because I feel like a punch is just baby shit at this point. Like, what's the worst fucking thing that can hit you? In? It feels like it's a fucking two bar double barrel shotgun right to the balls. Balls are fucking exploded. They're, all, they're gone. They're gone at this point. You think we could take it at this point, but no, they just, you know, they fucking keep hitting us. You think after getting no hit in the fucking World Series last year, you can handle all this shit. I thought I could. I thought I could. But when you're doing it night in and night out, it's fucking annoying. It's fucking annoying. <sighs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. It really is. Amazing how three guys can have fantastic at bats and then the idea to just swing at four pitches in a row. I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Yet yeah, one for 14 with runners in scoring position and they almost won the game. I know that. I know. They still almost won the game. Oh, all you had to do was get the fucking ball into the outfield. That's all you had to do. All you had to do. And you didn't. All you had to fucking do. All you had to fucking do. It's it's embarrassing. Uh, here we go. Phillies have gotten a game tying or go ahead home run in the eighth or ninth inning five times in the last three weeks. They are zero and five in those games. From John Fisher on Twitter, zero and five in those games. I trust Schwarber, Julian. I trust Schwarber. I do. I trust Schwarber. I think you should add Schwarber to that list. Also, think about this. I, I know that, you know, Phillies are one for, but the Braves went two for seven with runners in scoring position. Yes, they got the hit that won the ball game. That's all that matters. But still, they also went two for seven with runners in scoring position. Oh, my fucking God. I hate it, man. I hate it. Seriously, I'm throwing shit at my wall. I'm not breaking anything. I'm just throwing a pillow, basically. Throwing a, the softest pillow in the world at the wall. Screaming into the pillow. It's ridiculous. That's how mad I was. That's how mad I was when Kimbrell got screwed over for that strike three call. That should have been strike three. And Rosario should have been out. But no. But no. It's ridiculous, man. Seriously, you go down 6-1 to one in this game and you find a way to come back. Harper with a home run. His 1,500th career hit. Stott with a huge two-run shot. 
and and then Trey tying the game up. Trey tying the game up. Unbelievable. And then you just can't get the job done. You think once, once you would luck into getting the job done. You think you would luck into it. I guess not. <laughs> God. It's just replaying in the back of my mind. I can't get it out of my head. I can't. I can't. I can't get it out of my head. Holy shit. I just can't. I just can't. Every time I, it's, I see that JT at bat. Every time. I, I, I just see that. I, I see that Castellanos at bat. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> My God. Oh my God. And this is why losing that Marlin series also fucking sucks. It does. It does. Oh my God. And now it's Christopher Sanchez on the mound tomorrow against Spencer Strider, I believe. I feel like I think that's the matchup tomorrow night. Do I have confidence? No. No, not after tonight. Not after tonight. I've lost my confidence right now with this series. Even though this team has proven offensively they can compete with the Braves, they can find a way. If they even get the clutch hit tomorrow, they'll, they'll, they'll find a way to choke it against this team. They'll find a way to choke it. Because they'll get bases loaded zero outs after a Kyle Schwarber game-tying home run. They'll get bases loaded. You know, Trey Turner works a single. Uh, Harper works a walk. And who would be batting for it? Boom. Boom finds a way to, you know, get a nice little infield hit because the Braves make a defensive mistake in the infield. Maybe that happens. And then it, it's down the cost. It's down the JT. It's down the, um, who knows, maybe Stott's batting fifth. Who knows, maybe Stott gets the job done. But all you have to do is get a sack fly. Bases loaded to your outs. Nope, you grind into a double play. Oh, here comes JT with a... Uh, Runner on the third base, two outs. Up, oh, up, oh, boop, 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 boop. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, God, fucking hell, fucking hell, man. And the Cubs just tied the game. I, uh, <laughs> the Cubs just tied the game. You cannot rely on the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> you cannot rely on the Colorado Rockies. Rice Harper's right. You can't rely on the Colorado Rockies. You, you just can't. Seriously, I. Uh, oh, oh my God. I'm trying to think. Oh, no, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. I forgot. It's five, not four. It's five. Because remember when they said 0 oh, and 5? I forgot about the home run that Trey Turner had in fucking Milwaukee on Devin Williams. I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> uh. These five games, these five games. If they if they lose the first wild card spot, if they if they do lose the first wild card spot, those five situations are why. Those five games are why, because you can't find a way to get that next clutch hit after another guy comes up huge for you. Even though the, the, the Trey Turner one gave you the lead, it was Jose Alvarado and Alec Bohm that blew the situation. So it wasn't the batting there, technically. But this one, the, the other ones are the fucking offense. Alvarado with a huge ninth. Seriously, I don't even think Craig Kimbrell was bad in the tenth. It's ghost runner and fucking umpire, basically. Besides that, he looked fine. It's just when you're throwing so many pitches in one at bat to one guy, you make a mistake. And sadly, Rosario made him pay for it. Fucking umpire, man. Rosario should have been out like 50 pitches into the at bat. But no, the 51st pitch. Well, the Mets beat the Diamondbacks, the Brewers beat the Marlins, so there's separation there. If that's the case.
Let me see. If you're a game ahead of the Cubs, if the Cubs win, it'll be a half a game. If you're three and a half ahead of the Diamondbacks, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It is so ridiculous that you cannot find a way to win one of these games. It is so ridiculous. It's a joke, man. Can't trust the Rockies to beat a game against the fucking Cubs in Coors Field. I thought the Co I thought the Rockies had an advantage in Coors Field. I thought they did. <sighs> uh, here's a fun game. Which uh, blown clutch home run was the worst? Which was the worst? Probably this one. Probably this one. It was probably this one. Probably it was this one. Honestly, you could probably put up for Bryce Harper's 300 home run as well. That was probably also equally as bad because you had the game there. You, Craig Kimbrell just became human that day. I barely... I don't even have to go over the entire game because basically that summary is what I did. Uh, San Fran's out of it, Julian. You don't have to worry about San Fran. You don't have to worry about San Francisco. San Francisco, they are... Eh, they're on a four-game winning streak, so they are a game out of the wildcard spot. <sighs> it's fucking ridiculous, man. It's fucking ridiculous. It is. It's a joke. How many times are they gonna are they gonna waste the clutch home run? How many times? Uh, the worst one was the Harper San Fran. You think the San Fran one was the worst? I think tonight was the worst. Just because you had zero outs and two runners on in the ninth. I think that's the reason why it's the worst. It's it just is. Yeah, J JT. It, seriously, look at JT Romuto's splits on the road and at home. It, it does not make sense. It does not make sense at all. It does not make sense. Seriously, he's like a. MVP level type hitter on the road and then at home it's just it doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense how he's this bad at Citizens Bank Park it really doesn't make sense it really doesn't oh yeah we, both teams were up against the ump the ump was bad for both sides he was it's just, it's unbelievable. Seriously, JT should understand what his numbers are at home. Okay, I'm just going to try to get the guys over. He literally, he tried to end the game with one swing, and it just didn't work. And you just ruined the entire inning. Is there any word about Reese? No. No. I think the only way Reese comes back is if you get deep into the playoffs. I think that's the only way he comes back. I think that's the only way he comes back. And that's still not even guaranteed. Bring challenging strikes to the major. Oh, I would love that. I would love the challenge to strike zone. <laughs> Can Bryce get... Uh, Bryce used to be a catcher. That's what he was drafted as. Bryce used to be a catcher. Schwarber used to be a catcher too. So... <laughs> you Schwarber behind the plate if you wanted to. That gets him out of the field. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's amazing. Like, seriously, it, it's just... Speechless on how many clutch home runs you waste. Because you just can't get that hit with a guy on with zero outs. Holy hell. Holy hell.
Oh, I know I know Castellanos is not a clutch player. He's not clutch. He's having a good year. He had the home run today, but he, he really needed to get a hit in that scenario. It's just... Zach Wheeler, the umpire screwed him with him tonight. Seriously, I thought he was going to have a fine game, until, if, even though I know this is the first inning. But I really, truly believe that Austin Riley at bat in the first inning with the umpire just completely screwing over the strike zone completely threw Wheeler out of a funk. I really believe that. I think that, you know, you know, it could have really screwed him over because his pitch count was just getting worked up because the umpire did not want to call strikes. The berries kept fouling balls off, and then it just became, you know, completely lost. You know, he allows the home run to Riley. He allows the home run to Acuna on a hanger. And then he allows a couple more base runners. He allows the home run to the DUI guy and Marcelo Zuna. I have no idea why this guy is still in the league. Gets a domestic abuse thing and then he gets a DUI. Seriously, how is, how is this loser still in the league? He is such a hate the face. Such a hate the face. Like seriously, look at all the pitchers that you forced the Braves to use. Freed, I can understand going five innings because, you know, he just he's just coming off of the injured list and all that stuff. But the Phillies also made him work. Uh, they used two innings from Tonkin. Then Jimenez was the one that allowed the three, you know, runs. The two homers, the Stott and, and Harper. Minter came in and was dominant. Iglesias really struggled, but then the Phillies helped him out. And then Brad Hand. It's just Brad Hand out of all fucking people. Brad Hand. Yeah, the, the umpire was terrible. The umpire was terrible. Who do you want starting in game? Well, Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler. That's the only, that he's starting game one. There's no question about it. It's Zach Wheeler starting game one. Now, the Braves, to me, right now, because right now they're just an unstoppable force. They're an amazing regular season team. It really just depends on who they play in the playoffs. Because... I see if they play a team like the Milwaukee Brewers in the NLDS, I think the Milwaukee Brewers pitching can shut them down. I really do believe that. Because the Braves starting pitching does not match up the Milwaukee's, and the bullpens are, you know, neck and neck. I mean, Dominic, how many, like, am I just going to go into this game yelling at Rob Thompson the entire, Rob is not the reason why you lost the game. Rob is not the reason why you lost the game. It's Nick Castellanos and JT Romuto. Those two guys are the reasons why you lost the game. Zero outs, two runners on base, and then you swing at four straight pitches to get out of the inning. It's Nick Castellanos and JT Romuto. Those are the reasons why you lost the game. It's not Rob Thompson. It's, you know, complain about the decisions about, you know, not starting Marsh and not starting Stott. He brought Stott in regardless, and look what happened, okay? He brought Stott in. He brought Marsh didn't do anything today, so maybe he should have kept Pache in the lineup throughout the game. So maybe he could have. So who knows? Seriously, the the Braves to me, they're either winning the World Series or they're getting destroyed in the NLDS. That's the only way I see it. It was the same thing with the Boston Bruins. They were either winning the Stanley Cup or they were getting destroyed in the first round. They didn't get destroyed, but they you know went to a greasy game seven and choked a three one lead in the funniest fashion possible. But Dominic, Aaron Boone gets ejected twenty billion times, and where are the Yankees? The Yankees suck. The Yankees are terrible. I'm just saying. The Yankees suck. Aaron Boone Aaron Boone's, you know, getting into the face of the umpire, it's does nothing. It does nothing. Yeah, you could do it once in a while, but Aaron Boone does it so many times, it, it goes ineffective because that's how bad the Yankees are. So, that's just, you know, that's just it. You know? You know what I mean? <sighs> Jesus. And I think the only reason JT and Castellanos were batting back-to-back -back was because Freed was on the bump. So they wanted to stack as many righties in the lineup as possible, and sadly, throughout the game, you can't switch the order like that. So I th I'm assuming that's the case. Oh, my fucking God. 
doesn't look good to line up today. Uh, Kyle Schwarber did not look good today. Sadly, his average fell back below 200. Over four with four strikeouts. Trey Turner was amazing. Alec Bohm had the hit in the ninth inning. Bryce Harper, amazing. JT, fuck off. Nick Castellanos, he had a home run in this game, but he also cost the game. Sosa went over for 2. Stott came in eventually. He went 1 for 3 with a 2-run shot. Uh, Pache went 0 for 3. Then Marsh came in went 0 for 2. And then Rojas went 2 for 4. Bullpen I thought was fine. I thought the bullpen was fine. Dominguez doesn't allow a run. Marte doesn't allow a run. Alvarado doesn't allow a run. And then Kimbrell technically does, but it's an unearned run because of the stupid ghost runner. One of the dumbest rules ever invented in sports. It really is. If you're going to use the Ghost Runner, why not just wait till like the 12th or the 13th when it gets deeper in extra innings? You don't have to start it right on the fucking brink of extras. Jesus. Yeah, if the Phillies and the in, whoever the first and second wild card spot teams are, it, whoever wins that wild card series plays the Braves, and then whoever wins out of um, no, 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 no. It's actually um, why am I losing? Touch here. Um, wait. Wait. No, 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 no. I was. Sh- wait. Why am I losing track? Why am I losing track? Because. Okay, okay, yeah. Either the. Wait, why am I losing so much track here? Yeah, I'm, re- I'm really stumped. I- I'm, I'm blowing a blank. I'm blowing a blank. I can't think. I can't think. Has Strider ever played well in the playoffs? Well, you know what happened with Strider last year, Corey. You know what happened there. Look, Spencer Strider, he's having a solid year. He's having a solid year. He's probably going to be in the Cy Young voting, most likely. He's probably not going to be a finalist, but I'm sure he's going to be, like, top five, I would assume. Um, If I look at tomorrow, if I look at his stats, like I said, it's going to be Christopher Sanchez and Spencer Strider. Strider, he's 16 and 5, 383 ERA, 109 whip, really good numbers. He is definitely very prone to giving up a lot of runs and blowing up during games. He blew up his last game against the St. Louis Cardinals, only went two and two thirds innings. Um, but he can also, you know, have some games where he's absolutely dominant and he's striking out 15 billion people. That's basically the way of Spencer Strider. So if I look at his last couple of starts, six earned runs against the Cardinals, uh, four earned runs against the Dodgers. One earned run against San Francisco, zero earned runs against San Francisco, zero earned runs against the Mets, so he had a couple of straight starts there of one earned run or less. Then he had six earned runs against the Pirates. He had one earned run against the Angels, two earned against Boston, four earned against Arizona. Yeah, so he's basically what it looks like this year. He's either very good or he blows up. And majority of the time he's been very good, but he's got, he can have those couple of starts in a row where he blows up. But he's still going to rack up the strikeouts. He, he, he's a strikeout guy. That's what he's made to do. That's what he's made to do. He's going to strike out people. But he could get into trouble with walks. Because, you know, the last couple of games, the walks have definitely been up there. So that could be a factor. But we got to wait and see what happens. The Phillies, you know, they're prone to striking out. So he's probably going to rack up at least eight, I would assume. It's tomorrow, depending on how he pitches. It looks like the um, Rockies just took the lead again, five to four. Yeah, the, the I that I agree with Julian. They should have a larger lead in the wild card spot. They should have a larger lead in that fourth spot. There's definitely some series that they let slip away, i.e. the Miami Marlins series that just passed. You know, a couple of other series. You know, the Guardian series that they lost earlier in the year. The Pirates series that they lost earlier in the year. You know. Losing some of those, you know, some of the series that they lost to the Washington Nationals, they should have a larger lead. They should have a larger lead in this wild card. I do agree with that. They definitely should. Oh, God. Bottom of the seventh inning, Rockies lead the Cubs 5-4. to four. Can they fucking hold on, please? Because if the Rockies are to win, it'll go back to a game and a half lead for the Phillies. But if the Cubs were to win, it'll go down to a half game. Rockies, fucking hold on, please. Fucking hold on, please. I am begging you. You're in cores. Please hit a couple of home runs. Somehow the Cubs play the Rockies seven. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's crazy. 
but the Cubs also play the Braves and the Brewers to end the year. So I think the Cubs mixed in with the list of their schedule. They have another series against Arizona, I believe so, if I'm looking at if I'm remembering it right. Yeah, they got another series against Arizona after this Rocky series, and they do have a three game set against Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh can be, you know, a scrappy team to play against. They're not a te- they're a bad team, but they're like a scrappy team, bad team like the Nationals are. So maybe they can sneak, you know, a couple of losses in there for the Cubs. Uh, they play Arizona, Pittsburgh, Colorado again. Then they play Atlanta and Milwaukee to hold out the air. Yeah, and the Phillies, the Phillies do have the tiebreaker against the Cubs. That does help. That does help a lot. So they also have a tiebreaker against the Diamondbacks. Say if the Diamondbacks were, you know, to get in that second wild card spot. So, if I'm looking at Arizona's final schedule, I'm not sure if it's as, I think it's easier than the um, Cubs. Yeah, they play they play the Mets, even though they just lost to the Mets. They have two more games against them. They have three games against the Cubs in sh- at home. Then they have two games against San Francisco, three games against the Yankees, three games against Chicago, the White Sox, that is, and three games against Houston to close out the year. So, it definitely is a tougher schedule to close out the season, you know, with the Houston Astros. But... You know, it definitely, you know, the Cubs last few games and the Diamondbacks last few games, they're definitely tough schedules. And I think the same thing goes for like a team like the um, San Francisco Giants. I think the same thing goes for that team, too, because I do believe they play the Dodgers a lot this month, if I'm not mistaken. I do think they play the Dodgers a lot because right now they are playing the Cleveland Guardians. They won last night and currently they are tied one to one in the fifth. But after this Guardian series, they play four against the Rockies. Why is every fucking team playing the Rockies? Jesus Christ. They play two against Arizona. They play four in LA against the Dodgers, three against the Padres, and three against the Dodgers. So they play the Padres, Dodgers, and Padres to close out the... Well, the the Diamondbacks, the Dodgers, the Padres, and the Dodgers in the final four series of the year. That's a very tough schedule for for the Giants. A very tough schedule. They probably have the toughest to close out the season. Say what you want about the Padres, but, you know, they can be a team, you know, that can dominate with their pitching staff. But, you know, the Padres are the Padres, and they have the record that they have because, you know, they choke. (laughs) So, yeah. So, hopefully the Rockies can just hold on. Hopefully. The Phillies are a plus 70, Cubs are a plus 99, other teams are all negative, the Marlins are on minus 60, there will be a bad team making the playoffs. I know run differential isn't that, oh, run differential is important. Run differential is important. It definitely shows the sign of a flawed team. The Marlins, they had a negative run differential all year. They had a negative run differential at one point when they were the top wildcard spot. You can tell that they screamed, they smelled fraudulent. You knew they were going to come back down to earth. Hell, the Cubs at one point in this season, they had a negative run differential. They eventually got that up. The um, the only one that just doesn't make sense is the Padres. The Padres have a negative run differential, and what's their record right now? Their record is 68-77. and 77. They're nine games below 500 with a positive run differential of 64. They're the only team that just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Uh, the Diamondbacks, they have a minus 17 run differential. The, dot, the Giants, they have a minus 6. The Reds have a minus 36. The Marlins, a minus 60. I'm, I'm even looking at... Well, the American League wildcard race is definitely better. It definitely is. Um, as hell, the Tampa Bay... <laughs> the Tampa Bay Rays have 89 wins in the first wildcard spot, but that's just because the freaking Orioles have 91 wins. The Texas Rangers have 80. The Blue Jays have 80. The Mariners, they're outside the wildcard spot right now. It looks like they've been scrapping a little bit lately. <laughs> they're 29 and 41 on the road San Diego is holy shit eh, that's probably one of the reasons why they have the record they also do not have a win in extra innings this year I believe I do believe that's the case they do not have a win in extra innings no they do not they're 0 and 11 they are 0 and 11 in extra innings <laughs> ay 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 Oh, jeez.
They are 0-12 in extra innings and some things, something like 6-30 and in one-run games. I guess the Phillies could be the pot. Yeah, we think, we're frustrated with the Phillies. Think how Padres fans feel with all the money they spent. Same thing with the Mets, with all the money they spent. Both of those teams suck. So, you could be in a worse situation. You're, you're a good, the Phillies are a good team. Let's not forget this. The Phillies are a good team. Hell, even last September, the, we all know what the struggles in September and all that stuff. Last September, the pitching struggled. The bullpen struggled. Sir Anthony looked terrible in September, even though Sir Anthony has looked terrible all year. I'm just trying to make a point. Sir Anthony looked terrible in September. The offense was very inconsistent. You got swept by Chicago on the road. You were almost on the brink of being eliminated and collapsing, but you found a way to get in, and then somehow everything just clicked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're in the playoff hunt. Right now, we're in a playoff spot. Last year wasn't the case, for the most part. Majority of the time this season, we have been in a playoff spot. So... We are a good team. We cannot forget that. The Braves are on a completely different level, and we're finding ways to compete with the Braves, but it's fucking frustrating when you cannot find a way to get the job done after Trey Turner hits so many clutch home runs, after Bryce Harper hits so many clutch home runs, because JT Romuto and Nick Castellanos are idiots. Because they, for some reason, do not understand the situation of the way that the pitcher is going, and just, you know, they don't take pitches. That's not their style, apparently. Aye, aye, aye. Hell, even the fucking, even fucking Alec, Alec Bohm, who's a very aggressive hitter, took pitches, and he found a way to work a single. Ugh. Yeah, the issue, yeah, the issue lately is just, you know, they're lacking that clutch hit when they were doing it all of August. The power's still there. The power's not going away. Trey Turner's amazing. Bryce Harper's amazing. So, it's still there. It's still there. Kyle Schwarber can get hot again. It's right now, Some of, a lot of these starting pitchers right now concern me. Besides, you know, I know Zach Wheeler did not have a good game today. But I think he really got screwed over by the umpire. And I really think that just blew away whatever, you know, confidence that he had today. But I think Zach Wheeler, for the most part, has been really good lately. Aaron Nola, you don't know. He's a coin flip. Tywin Walker, I have no idea. Michael Lorenz is most likely going back to the bullpen, I would assume. I think Rob Thompson did bring up something like that, that they're probably going to stop the five-man rotation and go to someone in the bullpen. I would assume it's going to be Michael Lorenz. To, um, I'm not sure what he's going to be, if he's going to be a long-inning type of guy, or they're going to try to put him into a... I don't even know. I, I do remember seeing an article that... um that uh, they might put him in a Sir Anthony type of role just because of how broken Sir Anthony is right now. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the case is, but all I know is Lorenzen's going back to the bullpen most likely. So they're going back to the five-man rotation on regular rest. That's what Zach Wheeler prefers and all that. So Aaron Nola, I don't know. Like I said with, you know, Ranger Suarez, I know his past couple of starts have been a lot better, but this year's version of Ranger Suarez, I just don't know him. I just don't know what he is. Tywin Walker's a mess. Uh. Well, I appreciate the the kind words, Miguel. I appreciate the kind words. The, the Don't knock you, you guys. You, you guys have... All the talent in the world. All the talent in the world. Maybe it's just one of those things where the Phillies are just not scared of the Braves. Maybe that's one of the things. They know what they did last year in the postseason. Basically, over the last couple of years, if you go back to like 2018 or 2019, if you look at the Braves' record between everyone else and the rest of the league, and then you compare those records to their record against the Phillies, it's like borderline 500 against the Phillies. So the Phillies have something against the Braves that they don't have against the rest of the league, or the rest of the league can't figure out. So, there is something there. There is something where the Phillies, they're not afraid to play the Braves. So, there is something to it, but, you know, you could, you easily could have won three games in this series. That's what's most frustrating. You should have won game one of the doubleheader, and you should have won tonight. It's, it's, it's annoying. But now you got to find a way to salvage the series tomorrow. 
You gotta find a way to salvage it. Christopher Sanchez, I'm putting all my faith in you, man. I am putting all my faith in Christopher Sanchez. Hopefully, you know, Rob Thompson doesn't take him out too early. <clears throat> Their whole offseason was built around Painter when he got hurt. I don't think Dave Dombrowski had a plan. Walker was a bad signing. He always faded in the second half. I just didn't see how the other starters being... Yeah, I, I just don't get that either, man. I don't get that either. I don't know what they're going to do in the offseason starting pitching-wise. Honestly, I would throw a lot of money at that kid coming over from Japan. That's just me because the starting pitching free agency market just does not look pretty to me. If you get Arenola back at a good price, I would consider it. I, I'm not, even though I'm not going to pay $20-plus plus million for Arenola, I'm just not going to do that. Because if another team wants to throw that money at him because they value his innings pitched and you know his healthiness and all that stuff and his strikeouts... I mean, Aranola can take that money and go elsewhere. Like I said, if the price is right, I'll take Aranola back. It's like I don't I don't hate Aranola. I'm just very frustrated with him. Because you don't know what you're getting with him this year. But if the price is right, I would take him back. But if say if Aranola does not return next year, I would throw all the money at, at, at this Japanese pitcher coming over, man. Because his numbers are fucking good. It's really good. He's 24 years old. You can get him under a lot of control. Give him some money. Give him some term. Yeah, I, th I think Dave Dombrowski is going to, you know, go heavy pitching-wise this offseason. I know everyone wants to bring the rumors up about the Mike Trout situation, about how the Angels might force him to ask for a trade. I don't think Mike Trout makes sense for the Phillies. As much as talented as Mike, Mike Trout is, I just don't think, you know, with his health concerns the past couple of years, I just don't think it's worth it. Unless the Angels are willing to take most of that salary and they're not going to ask for much in return and it's basically just a salary dump, I would consider it. But if they want, like, significant return for Mike Trout, I, I'm not doing it because he hasn't proven the last few years that he can stay on the field for a full 162. I just don't want to do that. I'd rather focus on the pitching. I'd rather focus on the bullpen. I'd rather focus on supplementing the bench. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Yeah, we are getting pretty long in this stream. We definitely are. Rockies are beating the Cubs right now 6-4, to four, so hopefully they can hold that off. They blew it yesterday, but please fucking hold on to it today. Top of the eighth inning with one out. So please hold on to that. I beg of you. Please. Please, please, please. The best free agent pitcher next year is Snell. I I don't even trust that. I wouldn't even trust Blake Snell with a 50-foot pole. I know he is having great numbers this year, but I feel like Blake Snell is the guy that completely falls off a cliff. I just feel like he does. He doesn't go deep in the ball games. He has a lot of issues with walks. I feel like there's a lot of luck induced with him this year because, yes, he is racking up the strikeout numbers and he's getting out of good situations. But the, the thing is, he just doesn't go deep in the ball games. He's prone to the walk, and he's not at the right age, too. I think he's he's not as young as you think. I think he's in his 30s, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's in his 30s. Yeah, he's 30. He's exactly 30 years old. I just really feel like that would be a mistake of a signing. I would. Like I said, I would throw all the money in the world at that Japanese pitcher coming over. I would. I just would. Feel like you need some nice international stardom. I don't think he could pitch in a big market. Eh, that could be the case. He's only pitched in what Tampa Bay and San Diego his entire career. So, even though I guess you can consider San Diego, eh, San Diego only has one sports team. So, do are they even considered a big market? Probably not. Most likely not. Yeah. So, ah. Uh, Phillies wasted another clutch home run, but they have a chance to try to split the series tomorrow with Christopher Sanchez on the bump. Oh, my God. They have a chance. Let's believe. Let's believe. Tomorrow night, Christopher Sanchez. Without that, guys, I'm going to call it out here tonight. Yes, uh, Kodai Senga is really good. He's basically the, the only bright side for the Mets this year besides Pete Alonso as well. Basically, he's the only bright side for the Mets. Kodai Senga, he's nasty. Really nasty. But I appreciate you guys joining in in the misery, joining in the frustration. 
So do not forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I like to see those. Do not forget to drop a like. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Does me a great deal of service. Join the TTP Sports family. You can see this idiot get pissed off, get mad, be passionate about his teams. Let's see what the reaction is tomorrow, and we could, we could see what the reaction is on Thursday after Eagles-Vikings. So we could definitely see that. So join up if you're new or if you're a current subscriber. Definitely recommend it to other people. I would appreciate you for that. Also use the code TTP Sports $20 off your first purchase at Seagate. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Thank you once again, everybody, for joining tonight. I will...